Hello everyone, this is Doug here. And in this video, we're gonna start talking about how alcohols react and then um, how we can make alcohols really great leaving groups by turning them into chlorine, bromine, or these sulfonate esters. So let's start by reviewing kind of how alcohols behave, right? Um, we know that they're very weak bases. Um, they don't even have full negative charges on them, right? So if I have some example, <clears throat> like um, just good old ethanol, only has a partial charge on it, right? Partial positive, partial, oops, partial negative and positive. It's not gonna go deprotonate something, right? This is not gonna go out and um, go remove a hydrogen from like say a nitrogen or something like that, right? They're very, very, very weak. You're not gonna have it do an acid-base reaction. The only time that you're gonna see um, an alcohol get protonated probably is when it reacts with a strong acid. So basically only picks up a proton, only gets protonated. Basically by strong acids. Or at least very, very, very acidic solutions with really low pHs. Um, if you're gonna wanna if you wanna get a hydrogen onto an oxygen, you're gonna need a strong acid. And we'll see a lot of that in our next lecture, in our next next video, when we do talk about what happens when you expose um, acids uh, to alcohols. We also know that um, alcohols are weak acids, right? They don't dissociate very well. Right? You're not gonna just have um, an H fall off of an alcohol to leave you with an O minus because it's just too unstable, right? It's immediately going to go backwards. It's it doesn't dissociate appreciably at all. It's like one out of every like 10 to the 15th molecules will do this. Um, they're just not going to really dissociate, right? They're not very good acids. Um, you can deprotonate them with like negative N's and negative C's, but that's about it, right? So can be deprotonated, deprotonated now. Uh, with very strong acids. Right, so now we're talking about things like um, if you have a negative nitrogen, like an NaNH2, or if you had a negative carbon, like an uh, methyl lithium or something like that, right? Negative carbon, negative N, those would be strong enough bases to deprotonate an H. But normal bases like hydroxide, methoxide, you're just going to get more like 50-50-ish equilibria uh, ratios, but not full deprotonations. We also already learned about SN2 reactions and E2 reactions, right? Can these do e, uh, SN2 reactions, right? So if I want to look at this, I've got a partial positive on the hydrogen, negative on my oxygen, and positive on the carbon. And my NaF, if I split that up, right, I know it's ionic, so Na plus, F minus. And if I'm asking myself, okay, well, can the F come in and do a backside attack and kick out an O minus? What that means is that you're proposing that we're going to kick off an OH minus. And if you remember, right, if you remember, good leaving groups are weak bases. The weaker the base, the better the base, right? So recall from all the discussion with the ionic reactions, the SN1, SN2, E1, and E2, right, a good leaving group, a good LG, a good leaving group, is a weak, a weak base, right? And we have over here, hydroxide is a strong base. All right, that was our definition. That's our, that's our benchmark for strong bases. So what that means for us is that alcohols are not good leaving groups. Right, which is which is maybe comes not as a surprise since the whole title of this video is how to make them good leaving groups. But alcohols themselves are poor leaving groups. They're not just going to leave. You're not going to do an SN1 or an E2 reaction. If you saw a reaction like this, you'd just be forced to say that there's no reaction here. You're not going to have fluoride kick out an OH minus. It's not going to happen. You're going uphill in energy. The OH is not a good leaving group. This would just be no reaction. So I can't do an SN2 directly to an alcohol. In the same vein, right, we saw that we could do, we, you know, we know what an E2 reaction is. So here I have an alcohol with a, um, a, a nice base that I know is going to do an E2 reaction. So like LDA. So let me draw my LDA here. Right. And normally we would say that, okay, well, I look at I have an alpha and a beta spot, right? I have beta hydrogens on my substrate. 
And normally I would have my base, right, go and take off a beta hydrogen, drop down, kick out the leaving group. Now, aside from the fact that I already said that OH is not a good leaving group, so an E2 is unlikely for that reason, but also I have this hydrogen here that is more acidic than a CH. And so all that's going to happen with my LDA and this alcohol is I'm going to deprotonate this alcohol group. And so all I'm going to end up with is an O minus. And then my LDA is just going to become diisopropylamine. It's just going to have ripped that H off and neutralized itself. So I didn't even do an, I didn't do an, uh, an E2 reaction. All I did was an acid-base reaction. So again, the point here, right, is that alcohols are not great for doing those SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions directly themselves, right? Because they're just not good leaving groups, because their mild acidity, their weak acidity could interfere if you had really strong bases. So we need to do something else, right? And luckily, we have tools to convert alcohols into better leaving groups. And those better leaving groups that we have, right, there's going to be basically kind of two families. One is going to be the halogens, so just turn them into something that we're already really familiar with, chlorine, bromine, etc. Or we can turn them into the sulfonate esters, which I'm going to show you here in a second. So if I want to turn um, this uh, 2-butanol, right, specifically R2-butanol, it looks like um, I have four different ways. I'm just going to show you four different ways to do this. I can turn the OH into a bromine by adding a reagent called PBr3. If you add PBr3, what you're going to end up doing is you, you're more or less you're just going to replace that OH with a bromine. And I'm going to just tell you as a side note that this goes through an SN2 mechanism. I'm not going to show it right here. Um, you can ask me about it during office hours or after class or something like that, but it goes through an SN2 type mechanism. And I'm telling you that because that means, right, that this bromine is going to be going back now, right? Because you have that inversion. So the OH was coming out. Now the bromine is going to be going back. It goes SN2. And then the other thing for this, you're going to use PBR3. And then you need some sort of base because these reactions get acidic. The, um, the H from the oxygen gets released into the solution and the pH starts to drop. So we need to add some sort of base. And I'm going to leave it generic over there. But the bases that are typically used here are typically some kind of tertiary amine. So really common ones would be like TEA, which stands for triethylamine. All right, so just a nitrogen with three ethyl groups on it. So triethylamine. The other one you're likely to see is pyridine, which is abbreviated just PY, um, which is a nitrogen sort of in a what looks like a benzene ring. It's in an aromatic ring. Uh, pyridine is aromatic, but it's just a nitrogen in a, in a six-membered ring there. So pyridine. Either one of those bases, those are the two most common ones. There's other things like diisopropylamine, or there's, there's all kinds of things you could add. But you need to add some sort of base. So you're going to see written with PBR3 something like pyridine or like TEA, and I'll show you an example uh, examples of those later. So if I want to turn um, my OH into a bromine, I use PBR3. If I want to turn it into a chlorine, I add SOCl2. If I add SOCl2 and I, add, I have to add one of these bases again, it's going to turn it into chlorine. But it also goes SN2, so it also is going to make that chlorine inverted. So that chlorine is going to be opposite of where you'd expect, right? So if you want a chlorine here, use SOCl2. If you want a bromine here, use PBr3. So I can convert. And then, right, once there are bromines or chlorines, now I'm off to the, now I'm off to the races. I can, just I can do all my E2s. I can do my SN2s. I can do all of those reactions that I knew before. Right, because I took my my poor leaving group, my OH, turned it into a good leaving group, these halogens, and then we're into something that we're much more familiar with. So those are the two halogen ones, but I can also turn um, my OH into a sulfonate ester, and I'll show you what a sulfonate ester is here. Um, there's a few different types. Oh, there's lots of different types, but there's there's a few that are more most commonly used. I'm just going to show you the the triflate and the tosylate. So the tosylate is going to be abbreviated TS. So you're going to use TSCl, also one of these bases. And what that's going to do is that's going to replace your oxygen, or it's not going to replace your oxygen, it's replace the H and turn it into a tosyl group. And what on earth is that? A tosyl group, 
O is a sulfur with double bonded to two oxygens, and it's attached to an aromatic ring with a CH3 on it. And this piece, right, so this whole piece right here is the TS group, is the tosyl group. This is tosylate. This is a tosylate. And again, this is one of these sulfonic esters, right? Sulfonic, it kind of looks like sulfate. This is sulfonic ester, or a sulfonate ester, excuse me, a sulfonate ester. So it's a, it's a tosyl group. And what's nice about these, and I'll, mm, let me show you in a second, but what's nice about these is that they're great leaving groups because when they get attacked and they, something pops off, they're really, really, really stable. Well, let me just draw that right now for you, right? If I imagine, if I imagine something coming in and attacking this, right? So let's just say it's a, um, uh, let's just say it's a, a, maybe a cyano group, right? It attacks, does a backside attack, the idea here is that what you're going to make, all right, so we did it. It's an SN2 reaction. But the leaving group that you, you create is this. Right, and the idea here is that this is a great leaving group. Right, because it's a very weak base. Very weak base, it's very stable. Right, and why is it very stable? Probably already you see it. Uh, it's just because of all those resonance structures. Right, all those different resonance structures. We can have these electrons drop down and get changed up on, and get delocalized onto that O, or we can have them drop down on the other side and be delocalized onto that O. So it's super stable, really, really um, weak base, which makes it a great leaving group, much better than a hydroxide, right? You can imagine this is much more stable than hydroxide is. So these, these sulfonate esters um, are gonna be really good leaving groups. Now, so there's tosylate TSCL, but you might also see TFCL, and there's also MS. There's, there's lots of them, but I'll just do uh, TS and TF. And again, there's gonna be some sort of base. And that's going to do the same thing, only it replaces it with an OTF. Sorry, TF. And I know these look really different, or these look really similar. And where the OTF is for triflate, as opposed to tosylate. And TF stands for triflate. Um, more or less for us, they're going to be largely interchangeable. You, in, real, in reality, you might pick one versus the other depending on how uh, electron withdrawing you want it to be and usually solubility issues. Um, they have different solubilities. So if you're trying to use like a, you know, an aromatic solvent like toluene or something like that, uh, tosylate might be slightly better because it's a little non, more nonpolar than triflate is. But either way, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do the same things one another. And what you'll notice is that I drew these as still being wedges. These do not invert. They are not SN2 mechanisms. All right, they, they don't invert. What happens here, let me just show you off to the side. What happens here with your, you know, I'll do the triflate, the TFCL. Um, if you have CF3, and you have your alcohol, the idea is that your alcohol attacks this sulfur and the chloride leaves. So the alcohol, if it was already a wedge, it's just going to stay a wedge. And I didn't show this step, but you're going to have a step where the, um, the oxygen is positive and you still have a hydrogen on it. You take electrons back from that hydrogen. The hydrogen gets kicked off, so you get your, your OTF. Um, if you want me to draw more mechanisms, let me know. But they're also in your textbook. You can just look them up there. So I can either add... All right, I can turn my alcohols into the halogens using PBr3 or SOCl2. That is it. That's going to invert the stereochemistry, right? That's going to invert the stereochemistry here. If you're turning them into the um, sulfonate esters, then what's going to happen is they're going to retain their stereochemistry, and they but they still become a great leaving group. And so, as far as we are concerned, all of these are just great leaving groups. All of these can do SN2s and E2s, etc. They're all going to be more or less interchangeable for us. What's nice is now is that we can get into all that ionic reaction stuff. So let me show you some examples. 
So for the f this first one, right, I have some alcohol. It's a it's a it's a enol. It's got an alkene and alcohol, adding SOCO2 and pyridine. So really, what I'm just looking at is like. Okay, the SOCO2 one, I know that I'm turning my alcohol into a chlorine. And I see that PY is written here, but I know that that's just a base that I'm going to have to add to these things, right? It's going to either be pyridine or um, TEA, one of the two. And I remember that the, uh, oops, the halogen ones here, those are going to be the ones that are do the inversions. So if I take this molecule and I put my chlorine here, I just need to make sure that it now is a wedge. That I've changed the configuration from being S to R or R to S. So this probably would be a good place for you to pause and see if you can do these last four. Um, the last one involves a couple of steps, so it might take a, a couple of steps. The second to last one, I give you a couple of steps, and you have to walk through some old chemistry to use this new chemistry. So pause. Give yourself a chance to think about this. Maybe you'll be right. Maybe you'll be wrong. Either way, you'll learn something. And then we'll come back and I'll do these together. All right, so hopefully you did pause and give these give these a try. Um, now, in this case, I, it looks like I'm going to change my alcohol to the triflate, the TF. But this, I don't invert anything. I retain the stereochemistry. So now I've got still a dash. The oxygen, I never broke that CO bond. I just put the, the TF group on there, that triflate group on there. And I'm fine with you drawing out just TF. You don't have to draw out the whole triflate thing. But you should be able to recognize triflate and tosylate when you see them. Like recognize that they're good leaving groups and recognize that we can do chemistry on them. So for the third one then, it looks like I've got a two-stepper now, right? So the first one, I'm just going to put a bromine on here. So step one, it looks like I'm just replacing that alcohol with the BR. And step two looks like I'm adding LDA, which I know is my big bulky base. Um, it looks like I have two sets of beta hydrogens. And since it's a big base, I'm going to go with the Hoffman product. So I'm going to get that alkene off to the right. Small base would have gone to the left. Large base would have gone to the right. For the fourth one, um, I'm, just adding, I'm just adding water and acid. So that should be the Markovnikov addition of water. So that would give me an alcohol here. Step two is going to turn that into a chloride. And I don't see any stereochemistry here, so I'm not going to bother showing any stereochemistry. Technically, this should just be a mixture of enantiomers. And then uh, PHONA, that is this, right? So pH for phenyl. And then O minus, because then there's an Na next to it. So that's probably just going to do an SN2 type reaction, right? I've got a good nucleophile weak base. I've got a secondary, so it's just going to do an SN2 to give me a product that looks like this. Right again, where this is just an SN2 type reaction. So I can combine this, right? Here I'm using things that I've learned from alkenes, uh, that I know from alkenes, so hopefully you, uh, you remember. If, if not, you can kind of ignore this example. Um, but I was able to turn my alcohol into a better leaving group and then just do an E2 reaction. And then for this last one, it looks like I am doing some sort of substitution here, right? Because I've replaced my OH with a CN, with a, with a um, cyano group or a, a, a nitrile. So I know some sort of substitution. But what's kind of odd is I see that they're both wedges. So I retained the stereochemistry, which means that when I converted this into a good leaving group, I must need must needed to have made it go back so that when I added my NACN, my nucleophile, it did another inversion to pop it forwards. So it's kind of like two SN2s, right? The first SN2 reaction is going to pop it back. The second SN2 reaction is going to pop it forward again. So I'm going to pick, um, I'll pick SOCl2. Let's say well, I'll turn this into a chlorine first. I'll add TEA, triethylamine, as my base. And second step, I'll add um, sodium cyanide to get that cyanide on there. So step two, step one. Um, I could have, for the first step, used PBR3. That would have been fine, gotten the same result. But I could not have used triflate or tosylate because that would have retained the stereochemistry at the very beginning here, which would have given me, when I did the um, SN2, the second SN2, that would have given me a dashes at my CN. So y'all want to be a little mindful of the stereochemistry business, right? The halogens, those are SN2s. 
so they tend to invert. The um, triflate, tosylate uh, uh, groups, they retain the stereochemistry. So just keep that in mind too. Anyways, I hope you have, those are some good examples. Um, hope that clarifies, right, some issues that we have with alcohol groups and how we can convert them into better leaving groups. So study up. The next videos are going to be on what happens to uh, alcohols when we expose them to really acidic solutions.